Welcome citizens of Clay County. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend today's school board meeting. And I think all of us are very familiar with each other. So I just want to ask that all of you take a moment at some point today, this morning, whatever, to introduce yourself to Mrs. Clark. Since she was new with us the last school board meeting, she really didn't have a chance to get into the audience and meet everyone. Um, so when you do, I, I don't think we need to take a minute now to go around the room, so to say, but at some point this morning I'd appreciate it if you just introduce yourselves, tell her what you do, and help her feel welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brosky, it's all yours. I'm David Brosky, super. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, everybody's thankful for the many blessings in their lives, and, and we're ready to go today. We've got three different items here this morning. So the first one is the board. Uh, agenda for the 10th meeting. The very first item is the minutes uh, from the workshop on October 27th, the discipline hearings, and November 5th and the 17th. All of those meeting minutes are number one on the agenda. Number two, the revised 2021-22 uh, uh, student calendar and the proposed 22-23 calendar. Some of the highlights would be there was a typo on the 21-22. Originally, the planning day uh, is not 10-8, but is 10-18. So that's really the difference with the change that you see there on that particular calendar. And uh, Friday, October 15th, is the end of the nine weeks on that calendar, not Thursday. So the, so the dates of Thursday and Friday, the, the number or date was different than the day of the week. So that's the reason for the change on the 21-22, and, and then you can see the 22-23 calendar. Did this already come to us for changes because of clerical errors in it? I don't, I don't know. This I don't one? So. Yeah, I thought it was last year's. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm just sure. going to double check. I, I'm pretty certain that we've seen the calendar come because of I'm not sure if we saw the 21 grammatical errors in it, so let's be a little more careful so we're not... Okay, so number three then is the employee work calendar for 21-22. Uh, number four is the change in the minimum wage to uh, 865 starting January 1st. That's why those pages of the document are there to represent that change from 856 to 865, which you can see on the attachment. Back to the employee work calendar, were there any changes made to that? No. No. So number five, the personnel consent agenda. The personnel consent agenda is large. I would point out to you that there's many job descriptions. In fact, the whole operations department mm -hmm. is in there. You know, as a result of OPAGA, mm -hmm. those, uh, those job descriptions are supposed to be rewritten every two years. Mm -hmm. Some were close, because we had done a whole batch of them before, yeah. but some weren't, so now we have them all up to date there. There's nothing, uh, there's no financial impact at all or anything to that, so you can read those over. So does it, and this brings us up to date up. for now, and we wouldn't do this again for another two years? Correct, when yeah. it comes to those that are in operations, which is critical for me you know, to have some. I have a question, um, actually on the, some of the appointments, uh, and, and I brought this up once before, I think it was actually a, um, a police officer that was su doing a supplemental, had a supplement position, and this is a, I noticed on here there's a teacher that's at an elementary school, but he's supplemented for several things at the high school, and I just want to make sure that his instructional time is not, that it's, he's responsible to the elementary school because their hours are very different. In the high schools, obviously. Yeah, they, they, they can't skirt the instructional time in order to do that. They have a supplement. Exactly, and so I just, I did talk to the AD, and in most cases, they've worked that out. So I just want to make sure that we, we caution those people that, you know, your instructional time at your primary job comes first. So that's yes. it. Thank yes, you. Round number six, which is the uh, K-12 academic services out-of-state overnight student travel. And you can see a whole list of things that are there. I would kind of point out, especially since we have new board members, that sometimes we want to issue in the past the dates mm -hmm. of them. 
some of those events you would not know if, until after the competition occurs. So for example, on this list, you may notice that uh, golf, why, why is there an item for 11-2 and 11-2 is already passed? It's because they wouldn't know that they're going to the state tournament until after they played, which was already past the, uh, the previous meeting. So that's how that works. Typically, we do a pretty good job of staying on it. Number seven, revision to the daily hours of teachers and students. These were updates to them in order to ensure compliance, to make sure that those items, uh, particularly when it came to PLC times, was an issue, so now they should be all up to date and correct. And that's been worked through with the union with, as well? With Ms. Kidwell, okay, yep. Thank you. Professional Learning Catalog. Uh, this is additional changes to the Professional Learning Catalog. Particularly, there was really only a couple of changes. There's a summary sheet, third page in, that kind of gives you a brief paragraph on what the changes are. Uh, update or change the current supervisor, which will change the board member's name uh, on that document. The NEFAC level two certification for principals is actually 180 hours, not 120 hours, which was the previous program. Uh, the title of ASD, there's a change to that, and also a reading program that allows teachers to get their reading competency one and reading competency two within the same course, which is very positive. That's a, that's a feel-good moment there. I'd like to just say thank you for the summary page. When, when you guys update these handbooks and... Especially and the... It, it, the it really thing. is helpful to know where the changes See that? are. Right. We so were talking about that. that. I said, yeah. hey, we need a summary page. You know, otherwise we'd read through and look for every line that's crossed out or highlighted in red. And this is, it's much easier for us to know, you know, what you're changing and why. So thank you for doing that. Okay, thank you. We're up to number nine, which is the um, in-service education school board policy 4.46, which actually this is a very positive thing in which the time that teachers put in for in-service used to be that you have to have three hours in order to count it. Uh, this would make a change to allow every hour to count. And, you know, just to kind of be transparent, I think what's happened is as technology has grown and these things have become more automated, it became easier to implement one hour increments mm -hmm. of professional development. So we, we view this as very positive for teachers mm -hmm. and our employees to get credit for every hour of, of in-service. And this is the advertisement for this month and then you'll see it again uh, on discussion next, next month. Mr. Rossi, that was a state policy, correct? Not a Local policy about that was that was in board policy. That yeah. was a board policy. Yeah. So the next one is number ten, which is our um, resident clinical faculty, uh, our MOU with UNF. We have two of these individuals that work for the district in placing interns. We place interns mainly at Grove Park, Orange Park Junior, and Orange Park High School, which are our uh, our, um, our clinical schools. However, interns do go to other schools, and this is a renewal of that contract. The district pays half, and, and UNF pays half for those two individuals. That used to be called sprint teachers back in the back in the day. Did we used to have more than that? No, it, from my no, to my knowledge, people. it's always it's been always two. Been it's such a great program. I don't know why yeah, we I don't mean, have more. One of the great challenges is providing professional development support to people, especially when they're new. And we are seeing people that enter the teaching profession uh, that don't go through uh, professional teaching programs at the college level, which means the need for support is even greater, uh, you know, in today's current climate. <coughs> okay, well, Ron. And these are the two people that work with us, with work right. through the district. Right. Correct. So that it, I know we, we said it would be nice to have right. more. The really the additional people actually come in from you and have to do observations right. and things as well. Right. So. Yeah, it's a great program. Mm -hmm. The number 11 is the uh, Skillbridge Participation Agreement with uh, the Navy. This is for an individual to basically do an internship uh, you know, free of charge to the district, uh, but the Navy has their own separate contract or way of contracting that. 
For number 12, it's the proposed allocation changes. You can see that there are a few changes, and most of them are reductions. I'll kind of point out to the board that you will see more changes coming forward. If you remember, right now we're at an interim spot where we surveyed our parents, and we're in the process now of analyzing that data. We'll go ahead and we'll make that movement back. Uh, there's at least 3,600 students coming back, coming back to brick and mortar. Are they coming back from one clay or from CBA? Well, let's see. From the people who were surveyed and responded, 2,400 coming back uh, from one clay online, mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, 966 coming back from CBA to brick and mortar. Wow. Okay, so. We're, what we're seeing is our parents are saying we want our students to come back physically. Now, yesterday, um, you know, the governor had an executive um, order, or the commissioner had an executive order relative to that, and that number might actually grow, because part of the executive order was if a student is not making uh, progress monitoring, not doing well, we have to affirmatively reach out to that student and those parents the parent could opt to still keep them in the virtual setting, but there has to be this additional uh, step in the process to make sure that the parent knows the student is not doing well, and then uh, are they choosing to still keep them there regardless. It's sometimes it, the students that have chosen that type of, uh, of learning should be in a uh, in-person environment. And so those conversations, that communication, all of that will need to occur between now and the break. The readjustment of allocations, which was the original, should occur at that time. We'll reach back out to our parents with an updated schedule, because there could be some changes that occur. By the 11th, the first day of the second semester is the 20th. So that's kind of the, the timeline. We're in good shape. I, I always get a little panicky whenever I hear an executive order is going to come out because mm -hmm. you, you're never quite sure, but this was actually a very good one, very positive for our district, our mm -hmm. students. Dr. Legoco smiling over there that 900 students are coming back from CBA at least. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> do, yeah. we, do we have a, not a breakdown per se, but an idea as to, of those 3,000 students, are the majority of them upper level? like? junior high, high school, or the majority of them like K through? I can, I can certainly, we can tabulate that in the next couple of days. Good question. And, and, of and the reason, I mean, when you're looking at states like New York and right. the city that's saying, okay, we want our younger kids to go to school, but we want our older kids to stay home. I'm just curious if that, you know, sort of rolls out the same way by personal choice by some of our families. So. so so one of the great challenges and the reason why we started so early mm. with surveying parents, even though we realize the environment changes all the time, is that we wanted to have the opportunity to reach out to those parents that didn't respond. So we had about 28,000 out of 40,000 physically respond by pressing the button on the computer. Mm. That still leaves, you know, uh, you know, give 12,000, my math's good. Uh, relative to that. So now you have to reach out to those individuals. And, and, and in defense, I think that some people that were happy where they were figured I would do nothing. I don't mm -hmm. want to press any buttons because mm -hmm. if I press any buttons, something might happen, right? So they kind of hung back. But then we have to affirmatively go and uh, communicate with them. So it, it, it's a long process. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the whole purpose of that uh, conversation was to say that allocations will change as a result of that. If you're moving, you know, 4,000 students from one mode of learning to another, you're, you're moving people also, mm -hmm. uh, employees with that also, so. And have you, um, has there been any pushback from employees? Not, not, not yet, ahead? because it's really going to take almost till Christmas time right. in order to, um, to determine where, and then of course we'll work collaboratively with CCA okay. on, on the issue to ensure that it's done by contract. That move forward. So. All right, thank you. All right, right, we're on we're on thirteen uh, monthly financial reports for October. Fourteen is the deletion of certain items <laughs> report. Miss Clark, this is always a fun list to look at. I love it to see what's <laughs> still hanging out there. <laughs> yeah. 
especially interesting when you see that school buses are up for sale. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I saw that. It was in, uh, what is Robert? Robert Johnson had it listed on, on a website for sale. I was like, oh my goodness. And he's like, it's going to sell. You watch. <laughs> Okay, we're on 15, which is the uh, bid awarded for covered walkways. It's a district-wide bid. For number 16 is a, is a bid awarded for athletic field maintenance. I have a couple of questions on that. First of all, it looked like it was only secondary, is that correct? Because I know we've had a concern about the spring of, um, yeah. of an elementary school recently, so so this is strictly secondary, right? This, this is secondary, yes. And who was doing it prior to now? I mean, who's been doing this? I'm not sure of the company name, right? So we've had a company, not the... The individual schools were doing this. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. the athletic directors, correct? Right? So right. it's not out to a company right now? No. No, that's what this bid is for. No, but I so the no, individual someone. schools are doing it currently. Some yeah, and they would hire somebody to do it. Right. Well, the company, the company, the schools hired the companies and there was no RFP out there and so the RFP was done to make certain that the companies that have been hired are approved so and that's what this is well, so we but were but the school, we but were the approaching the, um, the bid limit right. on mm -hmm. the amount over all the schools is the $50,000 limit mm -hmm. so we said wait a minute we need to have a formal RFP because I spoke to an athletic director this morning, and a lot of these um, items um, at this particular school that um, they actually still do themselves. So um, my concern is, okay, what if they don't? I mean, the fifty thousand is that? I mean, you know, what if they're not using them, that service? They don't have to. They but don't we have still to have to pay. Isn't it no. the same company that does the um, maintenance on the front of the school? No. 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 This, this is, is like just fertilizing and right. this is just athletic fields. Right. Right. That's what it was. It's fertilizing the yeah. athletic fields. Fertilizing. Like and for example, air rating was one of the items mentioned, and that uh, this particular school purchased their own air rater, so they do their own air rating. Yeah, I mean they don't. So it's a, it's usually a list of items that you can pick from from their services, and you don't. We don't have to pay them fifty okay. thousand dollars. We only pay for what we use. Right. So if they choose to. If they choose to use that vendor, they can. If they choose not to, then they can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not, they're not... Well, have they been not, using this company before, or they just cho chose any company? Uh, from my understanding, the schools have the opportunity to choose whoever they want to or do it themselves. Since then, we have, um, as the work got more increased, it, it became to that bid level where we had to now go out and do an RFP to secure a vendor or vendors that are um, that meets the requirement for the school for, for our school board policy. Um, so I think it had a financial impact of a hundred and fifty thousand. Well, so what was happening was all the schools or a lot of them were using the same company. Right. So the amount to spend with that one company was approaching the fifty thousand. Right. So we say we don't have to spend a hundred and fifty thousand on that project, but we say it might cost this That's much. Good. Per year. Per the year. Mm -hmm. But we don't necessarily spend year? that much. Can we afford that? The schools, it's out of the schools. It's out of budget. the schools' internal accounts. Mm -hmm. So account. um, it's a decision at the school level as far as the service. I believe it's, you know, the, um, the athletic directors and uh, coordination between the principal, the athletic directors, and, of course, you know, um, using their internal account funds. So, so it comes out of their internal accounts. Is yes. that what we're saying? Right. Okay. Um, because I know when we've outs um, outsourced services, mm -hmm. and of course I know it's an unusual circumstance right now with Kelly services, but you know, uh, right now, and of course our grounds, um, as I've expressed to Bryce several times, that I'm not as happy with that as it, mm -hmm. it, as it should be mm -hmm. um, at some of the schools I've been to. Uh, so I'm a little concerned when we start outsourcing those things that uh, we make sure we get what we're paying for, so to speak. Thank you. I didn't realize we were outsourcing. I thought the athletic directors were responsible for handling all of this. This is well, so that's how they handle it. Is they hire it out. Mm -hmm. so.
or some of them it sounds like they do some of it themselves. Well, they do because yeah, I know they purchased, I, like I say, I just happened to have bumped into him this morning when I took some stuff to the high school. Mm -hmm. And he said, I asked him some questions and he well, said. We do need to be careful because, you know, we're outsourcing the, custo the uh, custodial down here at the county office mm -hmm. and we're outsourcing the lawn, lawn maintenance and now this. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I would want to appear as if we're outsourcing, um, you know, certain employees are going to start to worry. When we do RFPs, Ms. Clark, Sometimes, I believe generally, there is a board member as, an, as a member of the group that's doing the art, that's looking at the RFP originally. And I have Were you on it? Yes, that's why I was speaking, because I had been on that particular mm -hmm. committee. And there are a lot of schools, we're talking junior highs and senior highs, we're talking athletic funds. And these companies that are in this RFP, from my understanding, from my recollection, were being used already. And the athletic funds pay for them. The athletic directors set that up. Are there things that certain coaches want to do themselves? Absolutely. But there comes a time when fertilizing a field or aerating a field is not necessarily the, co the coaches or the athletic directors' choice to do. They might want to get out there and groom a mound or make certain that that first baseline is just, you know, everything's, you know, just perfect that way. Um, or the, the marking of the football field, use that as an example. But for the actual maintenance of the grass that's underneath on that mound or, the, or in that field, that they have been using outside sources for quite a while. So this was just coming back to saying, okay, we have to make certain that these are approved. And truly, I believe the two, there are two in here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we're being used already. And so it was just a, so you know, let's do this and make sure that out. the costs are, are, we know what the costs are going to be. And truly, the coaches, as you were saying, um, Bryce, the, the coaches and the athletic directors go through, it's like a menu. Mm -hmm. We want we want this, 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 and done, I but back we don't want yeah. that, that, that. And that's where that, 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 mm -hmm. that gets done by them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I guess the question I have is, are we being locked into companies? Maybe they, they have another company. No, these are the two um, that everybody was I'm using already, sure. like if yeah. that makes sense. There are mm -hmm. okay. How many supplies for the RFP? I'm not sure. Do you remember how many companies applied? No. You only interviewed these two, or do you even interview It's not an interview. It's based on size. Three, I think. Three there was four. only three? Yeah, there were only three. But it was, and you're also looking at how complete is the RFP that is presented from the company. Then that's, there was some, I mean, it's, have you ever been in that process? Several years. Yeah, and that's, mm -hmm. I think there were three that started and these two were, like I said. Just caution what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's the other thing that's important to consider is some of these services that are being provided by these companies require licenses. Yes, uh, yes. These are controlled substances that they're mm -hmm. using to spread on the fields for fertilization, mm -hmm. for pest control, for all of it, all kinds of other things that we don't necessarily have. I think, how many pest control people do we have in the district? Is it one? one. We have one. One yeah. certified <laughs> pest person that can do pest control in our district. So. Yeah, it's not some, that certification is not something that our athletic right. directors are certified to do either. Mm -hmm. um, but also, full disclosure, AgriPro, one of the companies on this list, is um, owned and operated by my brother and my father. So oh. I will not be voting on this item. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to be moved to the discussion agenda. Okay. And just remember there's a form, like Form E, that I believe you fill out. Correct. You can ask for it's A or B. I think it's mm -hmm. A. Yeah, I would say this, having worked at a couple of high schools, some athletic directors are very, very particular <laughs> about which items they do and which items they allow other people right. to right. do. So I just, I'm just saying. It's really surprising because they are so protective. They are. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they're allowing anybody to come in and they're do anything. They're not allowed to step on the field. Right. right. Okay, we're up to number 17, which is the Oak Creek High School Hurricane uh, Retrofit Agreement. Apparently, it's enhancing and reinforcing the windows and other parts of the gym for wind speed. 
Number 18 is the substantial completion of the district office building one, which is over there by food service. Number 19 is the pre-qualification of contractors. Number 20 is the uh, people's gas um, easement at Orange Park High School. Number 21 is the educational five-year work plan. These are the items that are put into the state system. This was really interesting. Um, and I meant to call and ask if you could bring a copy of this to each of the board members. I, I don't know if you all want it, but I would like that. I can get a copy of that. Um, because I found it really interesting to see the layout of, you know, the, the time frame of when we were doing things and, and um, you know, just the whole process of it. I actually sat there reading this thing thinking, <laughs> I wanted to write notes, you know. It's like, but I'm glad to see, you know, we've got everything lined out of what we're going to do with, you know, cafeterias like, you know, Montclair needs their cafeteria and Bennett's cafeteria. And so there's a, there's a lot of things on here that I'm, I'm anxious for you to, to get started on. <laughs> I, I do have a question, too. I noticed, of course, one of the places on there was Keystone Heights Elementary Cafeteria, which obviously it does need. But my concern is if we're in a couple of years, whenever we're going to do the revamp of that school, if that is still in the plan, um, then um, then are we going to be undoing what we've just done, so to speak? So we can push we can push these out. They don't have to stay, and just because it's here doesn't mean we have to do it. Um, well, I think as long as we knew that they were in line to have those, um, you know, the process that done for those schools. I mean, I certainly sure. wouldn't want them to wait forever because that school definitely needs uh, an expansion in their cafeteria, but I don't want to go and expand and then, gosh, a year later, then we go and do the whole thing over sure. and and redo that money, so. Right, so we, yeah, we plan for that. Okay. We plan to do that. So us. are we, do we still have it in our plan to make Keystone Elementary a junior high and build a new elementary? Would like to, yes. So this was actually completed before the half cent sales tax mm -hmm. passed. Mm -hmm. okay. So we were moving forward with this as if, you know, nothing was going to change. So yes, now next year this will include the sales tax mm -hmm. revenue in here and we'll be able to show some more projects. Do we have a, a timeline for when we expect that new school to fall in? <coughs> In Keystone? in Keystone? Yes. Uh, we're probably looking at maybe six or seven years. Six or seven years. That's way too long. That is a long time. So, how do we decide the priority? I know we have new growth and we're going to build new schools um, to accommodate the new growth coming in, especially in the Green Hills and Lake Asbury right. areas. But um, Keystone Junior, Senior, and Elementary, you know, that's 45 years. Let me remind you. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's how long they've been waiting for a junior yeah. high. Forty five years. We have a lot. We're we're getting thirteen and a half million dollars on the half cent sales tax, yeah. which isn't yeah, it I sounds know. like a lot of money. It's it's not a lot of money. It's right. a, an elementary school to build it, pay the architecture, pay for the land, right. outfit it, furniture, fixtures, equipment, thirty five million dollars. Right. And, and so I get that, but I'm I'm talking am, yeah. a current existing place oh, that yeah, we need to take care of, as opposed to sure. something in the future. Sure, sure. So that's I just said six or seven years is a long time, and yeah. I know that expansion probably won't last so long. I mean they I mean they need that before that time, oh, so yeah. that's why it's maybe to look at that. Well, and there are other things we can do there to be creative. We don't know. There's not a whole lot of room where that. No, I know there's not eight to acres. Expand out. I mean, we might be looking at, you know, doing something totally different there with the design, building a cafeteria somewhere else on that campus in plans for it becoming a junior high. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be like a step, a stepped process where we're going to have to do that. Um, because, I mean, just right now, you can't do anything with that cafeteria, expand it. You can maybe expand it five or ten feet, but it's not worth it. Right, the little courtyard is very is. small, I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so, really the only expansion area I see. And, and, uh, but, uh, so if we them, you know, have the plans of, hey, we want this to be a junior high, we could build a bigger cafeteria somewhere else on that property, do something with the library, move the library. I mean, we, we could do, you know, there's, there's a million things we could do, and we would hire an architect to help us with that. 
but that would be a step in the direction of moving the elementary school to the new property and then being prepared for the junior high there. So what you're saying now is six to seven years is when that's all happening. I mean, I don't want to, I mean, that would just be a, a plan right now. I don't want to set it in stone. I mean, it, it could be earlier or later. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to set myself up for <laughs> a specific <laughs> opening date. We'll break this date down. And I'm <laughs> yeah, the, I this is what you said. But it is on the plan. I, we, we definitely, I mean, and we've, we've been candid about that. We want, we want to do that in Keystone. When we built Discovery Oaks Elementary, we spent twenty three million. Mm -hmm. We budgeted what? It 20? was twenty. It was twenty point seven. Okay. And you think it's gone up to thirty five now? So we that, that was the construction cost. Mm -hmm. That was the construction cost. That didn't include FF&E, which is furniture, fixtures, and equipment. So the and total came to thirty five. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Now today's prices were with inflation were. Estimating 35 million okay. as, as a higher cost. I mean, I it would be you know it could be less. Discovery Oaks was in a really great location right here, um, 295 and the plants and deliveries. Um, right now, what we're looking at is, is Elementary R, which is out here at 315, which is harder to get to. You know, there could be cost increases there. COVID costs, inflation, just general construction. Well, thank you. Appreciate you covering all that. Okay, we're up to discussion uh, item one, which is the legislative uh, agenda, the legislative priorities. Did you all receive the FSBA 2021 platform? Mm -hmm. Do you need a copy of this one? If you all have it, okay. any copies in case anyone would like one? Terry, did you put this together? We did as a cabinet. Right. Very good. Very, very focused you, on you funding. You covered everything, and we'll just cross our fingers and hope yeah. and pray. If it's one page. And yes. it's a one page, <laughs> which is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's no... One page and bullets. That's the other thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So D2, there's no um, human resource actions. And then D3 is the public hearing for the uh, SEP manual. And the revision page, there is a, a uh, summary page there of the revisions. And I think that's it as far as the agenda. Do we want to move into the discussion for, in, under your board, under the attorney comments? Let's transition um, to that now. Do you have a second? The second part of this workshop, which I think is discussion and doing whatever you can work out with the... Uh, so, so, Madam Chair, if I could interrupt for a second. Sure. There is one additional item that's not here, but will be added um, shortly, which is as a result of the executive order yesterday mm -hmm. and last night and analyzing it, there's a brief uh, revision plan. It's essentially four questions that districts have to complete prior to December 15th. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to add the item and then we'll add the final document prior to the 48 hour window okay. if I can have permission to do that so that we can get that approved on the December 10th meeting. Okay, so there'll be one more item, I guess is what I'm trying to do. Under, and that would be under discussion? Yes. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And we don't, and I was talking to Dr. Lugetko, just relating to the executive order, I was talking to Dr. Lugetko and sort of still open financially, but you're meeting this tomorrow okay. with the other financial officers? Yes, we have an um, okay. finance meeting with the um, uh, finance council where we will be going into more detail about this executive order. <laughs> May it sure. very, so vague at this time. <laughs> When I read briefly through it, I thought, well, it looks like transportation is good, but we will uh, <laughs> see what's going on. Okay. 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 Okay.
given a handout to everyone on the board and to the superintendent. Um, whenever you get into the second half of the meeting to discuss the oversight committee and the makeup and the construction of that, uh, with regard to the half cent sales tax, I would like about four or five minutes to speak to the board. Well, I believe we're in the second half of the meeting at this stage because we cannot work on the other item until 10.30. Okay. After 10.30. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Got it. May I proceed? Please. Okay. What I've handed you basically are some documents uh, for you to look at that I want to go over briefly because there seems to be a lot of misconceptions and concerns about what this oversight committee is about, who can do what, who can be appointed, who makes the appointments, what the appointees' duties are, and what they can, what their limitations are. And so what I would like you to do, first of all, is if you look at what I've handed you, it's redlined because this is the one that went and actually was approved after the adoption of the changes, the amendments, to include charter schools. But if you look at page 2, subsection H, it specifically says how the charter or, or the uh, citizens' advisory committee will come into being and what's necessary to get it there. And it says, if you take out the modifiers, it says a citizens' advisory committee consisting of Clay County citizens, that's important, Clay County citizens, shall be established and appointed pursuant to procedures established by school board policy. I highlight that because the resolution is the, the cold star of this whole thing. This is what guides what you can do. This is what you decided on. The attachments are just that, they're attachments. Those are malleable to an extent, the fact that the, the, the plan, the plan is massageable. It can come and go and it was somebody's idea of what we needed to do. But this resolution is, is sort of like your guiding star. The second thing that's guiding is what went to the electors, what went to the voters. So the ballot language is guiding. The reason that's important is because there have been, there, there's been discussion about having a resolution to bring to the board. You can't do that. There's been discussion about how you're going to proceed. Until you have a board policy, no one can proceed with this committee. It specifically says, pursuant to procedures established by school board policy. So what I'm going to suggest to you, and what I think is accurate based on what's in the resolution and what's in the, the language that went to the voters is, first you have to construct a policy. And that is what I would like to come out of here at the end of this meeting today with is my marching orders to create a policy. And what you need to understand before you get into that is the makeup of the committee is entirely up to you. It's up to this board. Whether it's two people from Keystone and two people from Fleming Island and two people from Clay Hill and two people from Harrow, plus whatever else you want to do. It's up to you, and it needs to be in the board policy that you're going to ask me to create. And that's what I do is create the board policy. The second thing is, is the number. You know, there was something that went out by accident, actually, from um, Miss Ellis that showed seven people that would be part of this committee, and they were from CCUA, Clay Electric, and all that. It's not limited to seven people, number one, and it's not limited to those people or even necessarily including any of those people, number two. There's also been concern, because if you look to the next to the last page, as part of that plan, there was put in there that the oversight committee, and then it says seven member parentheses minimum, close parentheses group, and then defines professionals in relevant areas, review and validate adverse expenditures, that is an idea that's part of the plan, but it's all massageable. It's all changeable. There's no limitation to seven members. Mm -hmm. There's no limitation to three members. There's no limitation to 20 members. It's entirely what you decide here today and give me orders and directions as to what to do. How they're found, who they're going to be, not who, but who is going to appoint them and things like that. So right now, it's an open book, completely available to do whatever you choose to do. Um, as far as who appoints them, you could make the board appoint some and administrators appoint some. You could make the board appoint them all. You could technically allow administrators to appoint them all. I think that would be an unwise thing to do. Um, 
as to far as the term of how long those people would be, actually the duties themselves could be part of the, the, the policy. It's not going to be nailed down to uh, who's going to do what, but whether they're completely advisory or whether they can make decisions, I can tell you that the resolution says the purpose of which is to monitor and advise, not make decisions. They don't make decisions and tell you what to do. They don't tell Bryce what, okay, we, what, the next thing we want you to do is go build a so-and-so and add something. They don't do that. Monitor and advise. And I think that the way that people considered this initially was everything you're doing is suspect. You're going to get $13.5 million a year for 30 years, and you've got $600 million in stuff that you've got to build in 30 years. And so... Where is that money going to go? Where is it going? And is it going for new cars? Is it going for salaries? Is it going to raise superintendent's salary or my salary or the other administrator's salaries or get me a bathroom in my building? <laughs> uh, but I like the whole purpose of being there. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that would be a capital project. So we could but go to the that. whole purpose of this advisory group is to oversee yeah, and so that everybody can look at it and they can report back to the community in some fashion, which needs to be set out as part of the policy, to let them know that nobody's sneaking around doing stuff with the money that's not in the statute, number one, and in the resolution, number two because the resolution reflects exactly what's in the statute. So those are the things that I think you need to look at today, and I'm happy to go over them as many times as we need to. The second thing is, is timing. Uh, the superintendent and I have discussed it, and Bryce and I have discussed it. This starts collecting on January 1. By the end of January 1, we'll have $500, maybe. But by the end of the year, we'll have $13.5 million, maybe. But that's what it projects out to. But nobody's going to see any money January or February or March. It may be March or it may be April. And so what we have to do right now is create the policy, and the policy has to be advertised through the process that Bonnie knows so well and I know. And so in order to do that, we would probably need to have this on the board agenda for the February 4th meeting for a public hearing and if it's passed at the same meeting you could then pass a resolution if it was if it was if it was considered beforehand at say a workshop but you could have other things associated with passing this policy on February 4th that would start to implement the things you need to do that way by the time the end of February first part of March comes around everything is in place by the time people start looking at and seeing the money, there's somebody in place to oversee what's going on with the money. In the meantime, Bryce and her group, and Mr. Fossa, are going to be saying, this is what we're projecting for money, this is what we're projecting we to do. They're not going to sit here and wait for an advisory committee. they got stuff to do. we got buildings that are falling down around us. And so I think that if, we, if, if you see clearly, and, and that's all I'm trying to do, is to get the air cleared of all of the stuff that's going around, that everything here is a blank slate. And it's up to the five of you to tell me what to do so that I can get it done and come back. And I would ask if we can, if we can get some, some progress here today. If we can't, I'm going to ask for another workshop. If we can, then I'm going to ask that you set another workshop with an action item on it toward the end of the month before everybody goes somewhere for Christmas, home with the mask on, for Christmas, so that we can move to advertise it for the February board meeting. Because we got 28 days and we can't do it on the, the January meeting because there will not be 28 right. days. Right, right. And so we've got to have that time period in there. So the timing is critical, but it's not drop dead critical because nothing's happened. Nothing's going to happen for a while. Not from the Department of Spending Money. But that's, that's the piece I had to say, is everything is in front of you. And if anybody says, well, we don't know what was passed, the last page on here is the item that was in the board minutes. 
The only discussion that came up on the whole thing was how is the money to be spent? And it was a 4-1 vote. So the resolution that's sitting before you was passed without change. So the, the language that's in here is governing what you need to do. And, and my suggestion is that you need to break it down as to who's going to do what. How many, how many appointment opportunities does each board member have? Mm -hmm. And do you want to make it two citizens and one business community person, or two citizens and one CCUA employee, or two citizens, or however you want to do it? But give me direction so that I can get it done, because it will be done. So in a nutshell, if I may, okay. we need a policy, number one. Absolutely. And we need to, in essence, direct you to create this policy for us. Number two, we are deciding, basically, we as a, as a board will need to decide how many citizens will be on this committee. Right. I'll just keep calling it a committee. Some are calling it a, I mean, there are a variety of titles for it, but for this committee. In addition, I would also assume that we will say something about who from the district may be, for instance, an ex officio or directive member of this committee. And the reason I say that, somebody has to show the committee what we're doing. I mean, if it's someone from Bryce's office or whatever area or whatever, to be able to present to the committee. I'm, I'm just sort of thinking what's going to happen in a meeting. Yeah. Um, the ideal would be if we could, in essence, say no fewer than this number, but no more than this number. Do but we want to go with a broad? I mean, I'm just throwing that it. out. And then um, who would be? I mean, we've all received approach, approaches from varieties of people saying, put me on the committee, put me on the committee. And it's sort of like, oh, if, if we're thinking about the same people, that sort of defeats the purpose of broadening the committee to represent the entire community. Right. Um, I know that when Bryce first sent this out, you said, this is, this is just an idea. Yep. This is something that, yeah, this is not, this is not, this is, hey, whatever. Yeah. I know in Duval County, I believe they're saying a 24-member committee, and I'm 22 thinking, with two <laughs> <laughs> too many people, like but many people. who knows? Um, and the other, and as I'm thinking about this, and as I looked at your list, Bryce, I was like, you know, we've tried citizen advisory committees with this group, and it petered off to the wayside because we couldn't always get citizens. And our responsibility, as we set the foundation for this policy, is for the next 30 years. Now, policy can change in the future, of course, but. If we're going to set this policy now, we want it to be a strong foundation. So I believe people are going to want to be on this committee. There are going to be lots of people it, that it is important to want have it now, but you know, who knows 15 years from now. That's sure. why, that's sure. why, and in, in looking at Bryce's list, my initial reaction was, well, you know, Clay Electric will pretty much always be here. And if it's not that company, it will be another company that bought them out, but they will be representing Clay County in our However, area. they have 13 districts that they cover. Well, I, but it, we have to communicate with them. Right. We have to communicate Because it says a Clay them. County citizen, so they right. have 13 would, districts that they and cover. And it would be, they have people who probably work predominantly in Clay County. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at the company. But they need I to mean, live here, a citizen, not just to work there. But that's what we can establish in our policy as well. I mean, that But I mean, that was in the, the that was in the saying, information. That can be part of the policy. That if it's a representative from Clay Electric, it must be a citizen of Clay County. Well, the utility that, authority, the, whatever. I'm just saying there are companies that are out there that are going to be here. They represent Clay County. And they're going to, and then what do we want to do as a board? I mean, I was looking at this guy, well, that's seven. However, <laughs> you know. There are other people, so I, I comments. I went Carcass. ahead and um, over the last week, I looked up St. John's, Alachua, and Duval. Um, you're right, Duval's 22 people mm -hmm. with two alternates. They have, each board member chooses one individual of their choice. They have you know, the NAACP, the Teachers 
um, their Duval County Teachers Union. They have um, their builders, the realtors. And the, I have a deal. The list goes on. Mm -hmm. I did speak with uh, one of their board members, and, and she said, you know, it's a lot, and it's a lot of people, and there's a lot of opinion. Uh, Alachua County is, is similar to what Bryce sent us. Uh, I believe each board member picks two, and then they have representatives from um, the rest of the, and maybe each board member picks one, because they have 12 people on their committee. Mm -hmm. But St. John's was the one that, when we first started the sales tax, um, you know, reached out to St. John's and got lots of information from them. We um, actually, our resolution is what their resolution mm -hmm. was. We had to amend it because of the statute changing, um, and that's why you know, it was changed. They have um, 15 members with five alternates. Each board member chooses three, and then each board member chooses an alternate. They staggered their first year so that half would go off as, you know, half would come on. Mm -hmm. It's a two-year or a three-year term for the first time, and then after that, just like our board, how, you mm -hmm. know, that we always have some people there. Um, I don't quite remember, and I, I have it here somewhere, if they had a, a criteria as to who. I believe St. John's picked um, its three individuals with no breakdown. It didn't have to be, it just had to be someone who lived in the county. It didn't have to be a, a business partner or a business owner or a parent with children in school. Um, and you know, number one district in the county. So I, I like what St. John's does on pretty much everything they do. They really are a great, a great district. So um, 15 members, each board member chose three with mm -hmm. one alternate. And, and they had a breakdown of, you know, their, um, their citizen advisory committee does an annual report on um, what, what they've done with their sales tax dollars for the year and what it's been spent on. And, uh, they keep their minutes, and they've got you know, remaining in their term. They break it down. Every annual report is broken down by their. Which is similar to what we do with our millage. I'm sorry? Which is similar to what we do with our millage. Right. The one mill, which is right. similar to what you do every year and making right. all of those reports And so I, I think, yeah. you know, the, the transparency and oversight mm -hmm. is really there. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, but again. Does it say how often they meet? Just curious. Um, it did. I think they meet quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. Because I, I was thinking, and, and you need to correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't imagine that monthly would be efficient, number no. one. Number two, I, you know, yearly is not enough, but somewhere... It could even be twice yeah. a year, you know, mm -hmm. um, depending on, you know, how much is going on. I know this first year, we're going to be grateful that money's coming in, but there won't be a whole lot of construction unless we decided to bond out, and then mm -hmm. there could be, but I, I would think the first year probably is going to be a little slow, but once building and construction really start, and that probably could be at the discretion of the committee if they feel they need to meet more, mm -hmm. then let them meet more. Any other comments? Comments. Tina? Ms. Bullock, well, I got this list too, and um, obviously, I mean, there's some very credible people on here, but there's one problematic <laughs> thing to me. There's nobody from the South in the county that will be represented in this group, except for maybe the Clay Electric Board. Maybe. What other company? Well, here again, depending, if, if this is just a I know, but I'm just saying, and this was out of this if group. You were to, if you were to select, and I guess it, I like the idea of saying, you know, you're selecting one quote unquote general citizen and one business from each of our districts. Right there, that's 10. Mm -hmm. And if the superintendent, that would be 12. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the superintendent could sort of be an at-large sort of person. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my district, okay, just using my district as an example, and I could zero in right away and say, well, you know, I would probably reach out to the Clay Utilities because that's right in my district, and it's part of the, the But if you, do you see what I'm saying about this list? Well, but that's, that's what I'm saying. You would be able to 
pick your district, your right. your business. But but not according to this group. Well, that's so that's just no. I know. I'm just saying that. that, that I mean, that, right. And that's most, what I'm saying yeah. because Clay if Lester, I Clay created a list, manager, it would just show the south Clay. end of the county, which would not be sure, fair. Yeah. Either. No. And that's what this showed. We were just taking what other people had done and trying to get yeah. others. Well, partners. and like I say, these are well, very fine people, but they don't represent the whole. Point. I'm not sure if we have the same. Anyway, what other districts did you reach out to besides um, Alachua? Orlando, Orlando, Brevard, mm -hmm. um, I had several Alachua. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what other districts are size? I mean, besides Alachua, because like anything in Orlando, Orange oh, County, are all yeah. so big. California. This was a place for you guys to start. So we just wanted to show you these are the different types of things that you could do. I'm not, look, we didn't want to sit here and say this is what you should do. We said, this is a place to start. I want to give you your framework and then you can run from me. That's all. Yeah. All right. Very good. <coughs> what about any other comments? No, I think we each so select a certain number from our district. Okay. So, like, like, to make sure the entire saying, county is represented. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, like this business about just the superintendent of the board chair, I don't like that at all. No. I I'm not, no, 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 that doesn't, no. We need to be represented totally mm -hmm. in that respect. But on the other hand, I really don't want to get up to 22 people. No, I don't that, think that's to too me many. Is, that's, that's, that's entirely unless, different. Unless, of course, you have so many people and so many alternates, and people can, you know, if the alternates choose to attend all the time, whatever. You would need, I would think, if you're going to have a group that size, you would need an attendance minimum in order for the group to meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which, I mean, we probably need to put that in place. Regardless. I didn't hear you. Did you repeat that? We would need a minimum number of attendance right. for a meeting to take place. Right. I think um, a quorum. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think um, something to consider is when we're talking about putting business partners on this committee, um, Obviously, there's a lot of contractors that we'll be working with as a school mm -hmm. district in these construction yeah. projects. Mm. So, I don't know if you want to limit which businesses, which kinds of businesses we're going to be. To me, it would be like a conflict if you put yes. somebody from there a construction yeah. firm on this. If that yes. is something like that in Alachua County policy, mm -hmm. that no school employee or um, company that contracts with the school district. Okay. So it does create an issue if somebody were to come on the committee and then down the road do a right. uh, contract with us. So. Well, if it's no school employee, then that would cut out CCA and, and also SESPA. Right. And uh, right. which, you know, in essence, right. that could make sense as well because it is an advisory committee. It's not, yeah. they're not voting. Right. They're not, you know. I well, and I don't know if we really necessarily need people from Play Utility, Play Electric, because we, we don't want, yeah. I mean, we don't want to bring an architecture in who's going to tell Bryce, well, I don't like the way you're building that, do it this way. This is a Correct. group that is just, their, their, their main focus is to make sure that the dollars are being spent as the resolution says. Only yes. on capital projects, only on improvements to the school district. Any, because as per statute, it doesn't go to anything other than, you know, capital. It's just capital. It's not salaries. It's not, you know, anything else. So it, this this group, it's like we don't go in the school and tell the principal what to do. Correct. We are here to set policy and budget. And so, you know, we got to stay in our lane. Well, the advisory committee is there to make sure that what we said this money is going to be spent on is the only thing it's spent on, mm -hmm. not, um, not the, you know, how it's being built or how it's being repaired. Cool. So I really think, you know, just from what I've heard from in the supermarket, you know, you go to Publix and people stop you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. There is, there's an advantage to wearing a mask. I know. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're still fine, to, which I love. I mean, I, I think that the people feel comfortable to approach us, and I think right. that's important. But, um, I do think that, you know, if we were to each pick three from our district, then geographically the county's covered. Mm -hmm. And and maybe maybe don't box it in to where it has to be a business partner, a parent, a community member, and just three concerned citizens. Because, you know, when we were doing that school advisory committee, we said a parent and a business partner. And I had so many people come to me and say, I don't have kids in school and I don't own a business, but I'm concerned and I can't sit on your committee. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if we, I mean, I don't know how you feel. I personally, I would love to mirror what St. John's is doing because 
They seem to get it right every time. I would like us to just choose three members from each of our district with no set um, background, but three concerned citizens, whether it, and I personally would like to have, if it were me picking, I'd like a parent there. You know, I'd like the person who doesn't have kids in school, but doesn't own the business, but is, is out school, shopping. Supportive of the schools, taxes, that's the other thing. You know? So, um, you know, but I, I'm open to whatever the rest of you think. Well, the other side of this <coughs> is they're not going to volunteer to do this if they're not concerned. Right. Mm -hmm. I would assume. Right. So, Ms. Clark, any comments? Well, my suggestion would be uh, two from our dis well, two citizens. Mm -hmm. One has to be from our district. I don't think that we necessarily have to limit who we choose to our district. And I say that because I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. So I've got a lot of people that are older in my district that don't necessarily want to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a lot of younger people that don't have the time. So I think if we, I think two is a good number with an alternate meeting quarterly. But I see a lot of need up front because I think we've got a lot of ways that this money is going to be chosen to be spent that we need to narrow down and it's going to take a lot of time. So. I have to point out one thing. Mm -hmm. How the money is going to be spent has nothing to do with this committee. Well, how it's, what? The projects so you're saying are entirely up to operations that's of correct. the superintendent. They are an administrative function of the district. The so committee will just seen? be sitting here to say, okay, this is the money that came in. Mm -hmm. This is where it went. And it was projects that were capital projects that were come under the statute that governs this rather than being spent on something that was frivolous or something that was otherwise benefiting some other part of the district. But as far as any direction at all as to where the money goes, on what projects, yeah, that is an operations function and a superintendent district function. So what are they overseeing? But the money spent, spent on those properly. things that Just are allowed under the spent. statute. The, there are specific things that if you read the, the resolution, the very beginning of the resolution, it spells out what you can and can't spend the money on. And the resolution itself, and then when you go to Exhibit 1, it says the money is spent on capital projects right. with its life expectancy of more than five years and goes into detail about what those can be. Okay. And so they can't, it would not be up to the Citizens Advisory Committee to say, okay, we don't think you ought to spend the money on that specific capital project. We want you to focus on this one over here. That's not what they're there for. They're there just to say, to, to sort of like an auditor at the end of the it's program, like to say the money was spent on things that are allowed by the statute and things that were set forth initially in the plan. And so it is legitimate. The, the biggest concern is, I think people's mistrust of the district is, we're giving you a big bunch of money and we don't want the school board or the school board or the district spending it on things that just benefit personnel. It's not an operational expense fund. It is a capital expense fund. So that's, that's how it... But uh, they do not have anything other than uh, advisory. They cannot direct. I think advisory is the difficult part of this. It seems to me yeah. like a more appropriate title would be a, a citizen's review committee. Oh, and they refer to it as oversight committee in the other districts, just an well, oversight committee. Oversight or review. Oversight. Yeah. They're, they're not that's giving that's advice. Yeah. Yeah. They're not more. advising, really. Right. They're it's more it's oversight. Review. It's the check and balance. Right. Mm -hmm. you know. Which we, uh, I we go have back to the resolution that was passed, and it says monitor and advise. Right. Yeah. Monitor and advise. Yeah. So what, what will they actually be advising? Right. They're advising the public and whoever else reads a report that the so, money has been correct. So we're really using them as a, as a form of transparency to get out of Correct, them. absolutely. Right. Right. And that's yeah. really their sole purpose. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that, was a, that was an important feature that was put into the system because people are saying, why well, you just did, asked us for money for a, a oh, village increase and now yeah. what are we going to, you know, we don't even know what that's being spent on. Yeah. Well, this tells you what the money's being spent on. And where is the wish list found that was made up at each of the... Ed first. Ed first. 
packet. Yeah, the first packet. Which was approved by and the board. And it's still online. Okay. It's online. Because um, I think there was, I saw it quickly, and I think there were some items listed under salary, which can't be. So no, no salary. No salary. No salary increases. I think, I think if you look through there, there's a couple that I saw that. The only salary Cameras, uh, exterior campus lighting, uh, pavement marking, okay, fencing, yeah, 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 safety, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's restrooms, it's, yeah. 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 And then, and then what I liked that you did with this is that it gives it to you by region as well. And they used the high schools as the regional areas. And all of the feeder schools then that went into that high school, and this is how it sort of spins out. Um, but this was when this was first introduced to us probably four years ago, three Eight years ago. And mm -hmm. Dr. Kemp sort of started this and he literally had a, a worksheet that was probably at least the size working, of yeah. this table, possibly half mm -hmm. of us done with this. Not long after he joined us. Yes, so and he said, oh months. my gosh, do you see what's going, and, and he was looking seriously at the age of the schools. Right. I mean, Keystone's 45, I remember doing the 40-year-old picture at W.E. Cherry when I was a teacher 20 years yeah. ago there. Um, <laughs> you know, Orange Park uh, Elementary. I mean, there's so many so. schools that are old, right. but well-maintained. Yeah. And there are a lot of maintenance issues in this. There are a lot of, I mean, we just approved a new HVAC system in one of the elementaries, was it, or junior high for $900,000? And it just sort of gave me the chills because the air conditioning man was coming to my house that afternoon. <laughs> and I thought, ah, no, oh, no, no. Thankfully, it was just 100. But, yeah. but that's the sort of... You know, the plan, and when you say oversight, there are going to be things that happen that we may need to say, okay, the plan was to do this, 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 this. Well, this happened, so we're going to bring this up. You know, I mean, it's like setting up an, an opportunity for these guys to say, this is our plan, this is where we're going with it, this is how we're meeting these options. I'm assuming the oversight committee could, in essence, look at you guys and say, you know, you've been working on this parking lot at Keystone Heights High School. Or no, the, the ACE building. How many times did we approve the ACE building? And, and oh, by the way, this was switched in the ACE building, and these lights were switched in the ACE building, and finally it was done. But as these things happen, I mean, they're going to be, you know, things that you find that we need to do more quickly or more expeditiously. So that's the, committee the sort won't of, be advising right they won't be advising, but they can see, see that yeah, yeah, but they can see this is this right. is what we are doing, this is what we did, this is why, why we did it, right. and this is where we're going with it. But right. the money is still going still to this list. It's, right. That's sort of how I'm grasping this. And if that's wrong, then yeah, make certain that we're not, yeah. No, that's, that's. So I keep looking at Bryce over there. <laughs> Sorry. It sounds like the intent of this group from what the board is talking about is that you want the district staff to make their presentation to this board quarterly mm -hmm. for the board to see the numbers, to see the projects, and then say, yep, yeah, that, that meets legal standards and that would be sufficient for their meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay. If that's what I'm hearing as well. Mm -hmm. At the same time then, if they are making a presentation to, that we would obviously then get a copy of the minutes perhaps from that that's meeting. That's what St. John's has. For the school board, so that's part of our... And, and their advisory, their oversight committee is, is videotaped just like their board mm -hmm. meeting. Which so it people should can go be, on yeah. and watch and see what the conversation is. And so it's really open to anybody who might be interested, even if they're not on that committee, mm -hmm. that they can see the minutes, they can hear the meeting if they wanted to. And bring, you know, I, I don't remember, I didn't watch any of their meetings. I don't know if they did like citizens' questions or anything like that. But um, now, Dr. Legatko, will this be accounted similar to how you've done the windmill where you keep it separate? Yes, from all the other yes. The, um, we're, my goal, well, I haven't said anything, but um, <laughs> the intent is really um, once we've developed 
the projects and whatnot, we were go I was going to um, set up a, a reporting requirement similar to, and I know you've been looking at St. John's, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, Alachua is actually following St. John's. Right. You know, so the They're reporting one of the state, the financial reporting of all of the, the expenditures and, and, and all of the information pertaining to the projects were set up in a manner to where it is very transparent. So yes, we will. I was actually going to follow the, that um, reporting um, format yeah. um, that they've shared with me, yeah. so that I can set it up. So uh, it will be very clear. It will be very transparent. Yeah. Every project will be identified and um, uh, aligned with uh, their the, the operations um, you know, plan. Mm -hmm. So if this is more of a review and oversight committee. Then it, I would guess it really wouldn't be a conflict for somebody who's, say, in the field of construction to be on the board because they're not advising, they're not prioritizing any project. Mm -hmm. It's strictly a, yep, that meets mm -hmm. the legalities of it. So I guess it wouldn't really. Yeah, yeah. at this point. Mr. That's Baker, what are you saying? Only to the extent that credibility is going to be an issue. Credibility is the issue to start with. Right. Credibility from day one is what are you doing with our money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got people in there that have an interest in what the money is doing because they are con contractors or pavers or whatever, mm -hmm. as a for instance, Valancourt Paving, now Valancourt Construction, mm -hmm. always had a conflict of interest with everything that happened to the board because Carol's mm -hmm. okay. husband worked for Valancourt Construction. Okay. And so he could not, and none of those people could be associated with any kind of advisory committee because they had too many things going on that were could be considered a conflict that made them an uncredible testimony. And they would have so advanced knowledge of projects coming up exactly. too. Okay. So that's a concern. Well, that's true. So yeah. I think that that's the biggest, one of the primary things that makes it, and especially with what Ms. Bullock said, I think that's the primary reason to keep people that contract with or have the ability to contract with or likely contracting with the district out of the system. Yeah. Of this so then the burden would be on the board member mm -hmm. to find out who you're appointing where they work. Yeah, and I if think so. Any, so should we, if we have candidates in mind, run them through your office to make sure that we don't, they're not employed by or have a conflict? How do you do the, yeah, the yeah, background, I mean, you a know, background check exactly. on them? No, there's a whole bunch of things to figure out where they, where they might have a conflict or if they have a conflict or some sort of thing. So should we look at, like I didn't print up the policy for St. John's um, or even Duval and Alachua said no school district employees or contractors, uh, county contractors mm -hmm. or I forget how it was worded. Should we look at the language of other districts as best practice and maybe work off of that? Well, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, now that you've mentioned so, St. John's, and I've already looked at Alachua's one time, mm -hmm. but now that you've mentioned St. John's, I'll probably look at St. John's. I know that my friend is an attorney for Brevard, and I will look at what so Brevard's doing. Can you ask them what their process is for vetting the, those I community will. members to make sure that there's no conflict? Yeah. So how does everybody feel about what St. John's is doing with, you know, each, each board member choosing three, I three think, members. And I'm not trying to, I've not seen St. John's. Right. So it's, it's hard and to I say, know. oh, let's, you so know. So maybe what we should do is schedule another workshop. Yes. And yeah. everybody go home and do your homework. And, and maybe, well, Mr. Bickner, if you could get, you know, some of their policy stuff. I know your attorneys have this, you know, email system and, and send it to the board members so that you can compare take notes and think about it. Um, Do you have a copy of St. John's I I don't have their report? policy. Um, or, okay. I can get, you know, what I have, I can, uh, I just went on their website and found it. Does St. John's have a policy though? I believe they did. They had a whole bunch of backup stuff. But well, they I, have to have a policy. I only printed up. Not necessarily. I mean, we have to have a policy. We have a policy. We have to have a policy because of what the resolution right. says. Right. You don't have the resolution. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so but maybe if you could, you know, we're kind of spitballing here, mm -hmm, you know, yes. and you're the expert in policy writing. Um, if we give direction, mm -hmm. you know, like, like Ms. Clark said, let's each appoint one from our district, one that's not from our district, and one alternate. I mean, 
I, I like the idea of three from my district, but I'm, I'm willing to bend on that. Uh, See, I'm really I'm firm on three from our district. Well, okay. not two, itself. two plus Especially one alternate you. is what you're saying, yes. right? Okay. Correct. Two and an alternate. I like two and one alternate, but I would okay. prefer to do it for my district okay. as well. And one of the reasons that I've had so many people from Oakley, from Fleming Island, well, they reach out but that's to where that's where we yeah. share. I mean, you yeah. can you can send me a note and say these people have indicated an interest yeah. from Oakley. Yeah. Well, they may not have contacted me. What we could do, Mary, is like we did with that citizens advisory. Let's come up with an application, mm -hmm. and staff can they can all be sent to Bryce. I'm just going to throw it at you for a minute. You know, everything goes to Bryce. When she gets all the applications, she can send. You know, all district one to me, all mm -hmm. district, or she can send all of them to all of us if anybody wants to see. And then, you know, Ms. Clark, if you have somebody you really would like to be on the Fleming Island District One, Janice, would you look at this application? Right. Um, and we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. We want to be transparent, and those people that really want to be on, like Mr. Huffman sent me an email. Same here. Those people who really want to be involved, we want them involved. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know. We could maybe, I don't know what would be on the application process. I don't remember what Ms. Dennis had put together for the um, citizens exactly. advisory that we did way back yeah. then, or if we even need all of that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Victor, maybe you have a better idea of, maybe it just needs to be vague, okay. you know? Whenever, you, whenever we start talking about applications and submitting and go to here and sort them and send them back out and everybody look at them, now I'm sitting here thinking about time. That's my biggest yep. concern is right. it's a time eater. Right. So we I don't have a committee. problem with an application process. What I have a, a concern with is how do we get from here to there by February the 4th? So here's my concern. If we don't have an application process and I just say, okay, John, Sally, and Bill, right. the community is going to say Janice just appointed her friend. You know, and actually, if you pick, you know, three people, they're going to say Ms. Gilhausen just appointed her friends. It's right. not being transparent. We're just putting our friends on it. You know, we want to make sure that it's fair to all. How does the county commission in Clay County? Don't they have a some sort of planning commi committee or planning commission? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they make their appointments? Um, board members. The, uh, yeah. The board well, of what, what, and what do they have a, Is there an application there process? An application, so there is an application. There is an application process. What, yeah. what committee is that? The planning well, commission. For the BCC? The BCC. Yeah. But then the BCC votes on it as well. <coughs> and Which is what we depending did. on depending <coughs> on where the belt and the BCC, I mean, let's say we see one of your best friends on it mm -hmm. and we decide I don't think she should have her best friend on that. I mean we could vote that off. And that happened at the that, county commission meeting. Yes it does. <laughs> yes, it does. It did, yeah. yeah. So but if we're going to vote on it, then there's no exchanging applicants between True. board members because we're voting on it. That's you know what I'm well as soon as we and start voting true. on it yeah. then we can't share it. Which right. is right. And that's, I, when you were talking, right. I was thinking you were going to say something about the sunshine, and I thought, well, you know, I'm I mean, working on it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's frustrating because you do want other input. You want, you know, I would like to be able to say, Ms. Clark, why are you so in, interested in this one person, you know, and who knows, you know, that's, it and just. I'm only looking at the people, to be honest, like we've been saying, that are very involved with the business of the school board. Right. And I know will it will help them to be more clear to all the citizens that they touch. And that's the key. I'm just chuckling because I know exactly where you're talking about the from. Keyboard warriors, I think. We're, we're all thinking. So everybody's, everybody's okay with two from your district and one alternate. So yes. Mr. Victor, we've got a little ground made. There you go. Everybody's okay, okay with two from our district plus one alternate. Right. And so I guess do we, have, do we absolutely have to have this committee in place by the March? No. So if we were to do an application process and we had the committee in effect, you know, as of April, and push it out a month, I mean, how much spending would be done? I don't see March as being, a, I was looking at February, I don't see March as being a prohibitive time frame. Right. I still think you can do things. Everything, almost everything can be completed. Keep in mind, March. we're at the holiday season, mm -hmm. and if we put together an application and and try to get it on the December meeting and have it posted for three yeah. or four weeks, people are at the holidays. They're not paying attention. But so we're not talking. No, I if I 
I understood you to say that we need to start the policy. The poli I was going to just say that very thing. The policy the is what I'm concerned okay. with by February 4th. Okay. That's that way the policy is in place and you've got a uh, framework within yeah. which I thought you wanted to go forward with the whole no. have a committee in place by March. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Perfect. then we would have 28, we would need 28 days prior to the February 4th meeting. It has to be in the clay today on the streets 28 days ahead of time. And that's the policy. Policy. Okay. Not, okay. The committee, not the not procedure. Not so else so is, what we're doing else now is... Everything will be based on your standard Submit it this day, it's on the agenda, pass on the agenda. Right. This so is for public hearing for policy because it's a rule making. So a direction to you at this state would be that please review the policies, if there are said policies, St. John's County, Alachua, Putnam. Brevard, Putnam. Putnam has older buildings. There you go. Where, whoever has, well, they, do they have the half cent sales tax? Yeah, it has to be I don't, one that I don't, it, it has to be somebody tax. who's got the same sales tax. And a lot of the counties in this state have gone to the half cent sales right. tax this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a question. Do you guys want to allow the superintendent's office to appoint anybody to the board, or do you want to keep that strictly to the board? It doesn't matter to me at all. You like to have generally, the superintendent would appoint the yeah. same number as a board member would yeah. appoint when we've done right. committees right. in the past. So yeah. I don't. So the I'm good board. with whatever the board would like for me to do. Well, I mean, to that end, there was one other thing I was going to suggest. There is some value in having some people that are from CC Gray and Clay okay. Electric and all of those things. These people that were put out here, the, the value of those is is they understand what a capital project is, number one. And number two, if their name is on that same list of people that is sending something out to the public, I think there's credibility that's been added to the process. Mm -hmm. And so that's one more consideration. Yes, we like people from Clay Hill, we like people from Keystone, we like people from Argyle, we like people from everywhere. But at the same time, the credibility is what you're ultimately trying to get, an honest report that people will believe. It doesn't matter if it's an honest report if nobody thinks, if everybody thinks it's politically motivated. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we haven't learned anything in the last four years, we should have learned that. Mm -hmm. if it doesn't matter what it says if people don't think you're, li you're, think you're lying to them. So that's one more thing is if we can get, just, it's a thought, that those people add some credibility to an already su suspect system. Well, where do you draw the line? Like the list that, Bur that Bryce gave us, how many were on that list? Seven? And then yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're doing two each of an alternate. That's, that's a lot of people. Oh, but this, included, this included this included CCUA, this included um, superintendent appointment, board chair counting, And there's some people that had a school board so, member could yeah. make one of those no, appointments. Yeah. I'd be happy to give up one of my appointments mm -hmm. to but one of those organizations. Yeah. Now you're talking 10, and if you allow the superintendent to, mm -hmm. now you're talking 12. So if four of those people some somehow are part of some list okay. similar to this, and I think that it's changed the, yeah. the complexion of the committee so that it has a little mm -hmm. bit more mm -hmm. credibility yeah. and also more knowledge as to what capital projects actually are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I work with CCUA, Mr. Fossett works with CCUA, Bryce works with CCUA. If they don't know what a capital project is, you know, and everybody that's with CCUA is very, and I'm not using them specifically, you know, as, other than for an example, they understand the process. Mm -hmm because they have to make that same accounting to their shareholders and the people that work, that they're financed by. Well, I'm looking at, like, the Florida Economic Development. If yes. one of the citizens from that particular organization happens to live in my district, and, and I ask a person, or they, they want to... Or, as I have two plus an alternate for five board members. I don't know what to do with And the superintendent. The superintendent. I agree with the superintendent. And yours can be at large. I so mean, that's it's... Yeah. Now, I've got conflicts. I've got language that I've put in on conflict. The term, I don't have a term. I like you. And, and the people that work, that they're financed by. Well, I'm looking at, like, the Florida Economic Development. If... Yes. One of the citizens from that particular organization happens to live in my district, and, and I ask a person, or they they want to step up, mm -hmm. and 
they list that as their profession. I mean, I would assume that as we're publishing the list of members of this committee, mm -hmm. that their professions are going to be listed as well. I would think so. And we do want a combination of doctors and lawyers and everybody. Keep I mean, the lawyers I think it's the the lawyers lawyer. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they no. can barely ever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice lawyers. No. <laughs> so what I have so far is I have two plus an alternate for five board members. I don't know what to do with and the superintendent. And the superintendent. And yours can be at large. I so mean, that's who choose. Now yeah. I've got conflicts. I've got language that I'll put in on conflict. The term, I don't have a term. I like two years. Two years. And when we hire, or when we hire, yeah. when we ask these people to serve, one can be a two, let's say a three year person, one can be a two year person, and they will swap. I mean, then we'll get into it every two after that first year, you were saying? Well, what I was thinking is, is it, that's why I said two years, because if you have a two year rotation, then you start off with people that, say you start off with 16 people. Mm -hmm. At the end of one year, half of those people fade away. Correct. Or they can be reappointed. Mm -hmm. At the end of the next year, the other half fades away. And now you're on a two-year rotation. Right. right. It's harder do to do with three the, years. Well, I was thinking first that first initial meeting, mm -hmm. if we say a two-year rotation, then everybody's on two years. That's why I was trying to avoid that. Right. Well, yeah. why don't we, if we're each picking two people, mm -hmm. pick one for one year and one for two years, and then after that, everybody's two years. And after that, once they're appointed, it's two years. Does mm -hmm. that work? Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put that at two years. You see, I was thinking the two to three for the same reason. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meeting. And you could do that too. Three years. It may end up being that because the first person right. they say, we only have two meetings, let's keep going. You right. know? <laughs> I have meetings as quarterly. Yes. Uh, presentations by the staff. So whatever is necessary to be presented. Mm -hmm. um, we do need Ex to have somebody be in charge of the oversight committee from someone from probably Bryce's. Well, I was department. just going to give that to ex officio mm -hmm. participants right. that 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 are involved in presentation of all the organization, but not involved with the outcome. And does it need to say so appointed by the superintendent? Who? Pardon me. Appointed by the superintendent. Is that how that? the policy should right. read? Yeah, I think it should say. For the person that's the superintendent or his designee. Terry, you just want to add that to your list? Somebody other than Terry did that. I found the DACA application by I've heard from Terry's family that she has way too much time at home and she needs another duty. Terry, you're in. Okay, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench in here, but it's 1029. Is our special meeting time sensitive? Do yeah, we need to stop? It just has to be after 1030. Um, anything else that... It just has to be after. Mm -hmm. Should be something in there about a quorum. Right. So, well, Robert's rules is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, so if you put, follow Robert's, Robert's rules... rules for yeah. small boards which is so, very loose. One of the ones that I read um, said that they do nominate a chair and a vice chair to uh, facilitate the meeting. That's organizational. Thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have to be a Clay County citizen according to the right. mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then does the policy need to say something about the, as it is in the resolution that they will monitor and oversee. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to put is, is mm -hmm. I'm going to follow what the resolution specifically said. I may expand on it a little bit, but it's going to be, I am confined with that. Okay. I can't right. go beyond that. Right. Since this is a workshop, uh, can Smitty ask a question? I know he came because he yes. was interested in this committee. Yes, do you have any Smitty, questions? I don't know Mr. if you had any or not. Well, you, you kind of answered them. I okay. just, uh, you know, I sent everybody a, hopefully a respectful email. You know, a lot of the concerns of the people that supported this, myself included, was that there was representation throughout the entire county because that was kind of inferred at the informational meetings, mm -hmm. that there would be fair representation throughout mm -hmm. the county. And especially from the Keystone, Middleburg, Clay Hill area, 
there were some concerns from citizens that they did have that representation. And, and my, my biggest fear is, like uh, Mr. Bigner said, was uh, you want the appearance of, or you don't, you want transparency and you want the people that, first of all, supported the half cent sales tax and the ones that didn't support it mm -hmm. to understand that this is only spent on capital outlay. Mm -hmm. and, and to have that representation will, do, will kind of eliminate that doubt by the community, and I think it might give the community a better feeling about the whole process. Yeah, I think a lot of the people that did oppose it, though, told me it was because of the 30-year term, and that was really their own. Yeah, because I mean, there was a variety years. of reasons yeah, why they, they, they opposed it. But, you know, it's it's a done deal now. Right. So so at least at least they'll feel confident. You know, there were all kinds of rumors that, oh, this is going to be spent on teacher salaries. Well, that ain't yeah. I mean, yeah, it can. That's um, the statute. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, but they, but there were people out there spreading yes. those rumors. Yes, oh, absolutely. You know, so communication's uh, the key. Yeah. So that does again, an open communication uh, and a transparency to the community for the people that supported it or didn't support it. Right. It, it will. It will help the overall image of the school system, and it's like you presented the fact that you can give them a truth, but if they don't understand mm -hmm. that it's true, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it doesn't do any good. So, so. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Brickner? I think I'm good. If I, if I need another workshop, I will ask. Okay. But I, I'm good so far. Thank you. And if we did another workshop, I'm just, just an yeah. if, um, would we need to do it in December or could we do it in early January since our meeting isn't until? I prefer to do it in December because I think we're going to have to send something for advertising before the end of December. Okay. We have the next start agenda. Some real time crunches in December because of Christmas. Right. Um, she okay. has to have it on the streets 28 days ahead of time. In order to do right. that, it comes out on a Thursday. They have to have it in their hands on the Monday before that Thursday. We yeah, have a next to, to, I'm sorry, oh, sorry go I was just going to let you know that that date would be January 4th. Oh, that's to too, yeah. That's the no problem time. with our meeting. Yes, yes. Like, yes. We have another agenda workshop coming up on December 15th. We, that might so be, if we needed to do another follow-up to that, we could do a, a, a workshop at that well, point. Well, if, if we have to take action, it has to be a special meeting. Correct? It does. Right. It, it can't be a workshop. So it, it has to be advertised as a second meeting, special meeting. Exactly. Right. And, and right. would we have enough time for that at this stage? And so I would not be able to advert, I would not be able to send out another ad until the 7th that would not get published until the 10th. So and that's not enough time. So really the 17th oh. would be the earliest we could have. Akina, there's your 17th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Special meetings had different rules. Isn't it a 48 hour? We could, we could do a 48 hour. We do a special meeting. You can do it a 48 yeah. hour. Yeah. Okay. There has to be, I would need to look at it and see what, and but make sure that we meet the requirements. But but yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we actually meet the requirements because it's not considered an emergency. An emergency. With the special meetings to have the 48 hours, or there, there are yeah. rules. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Creating a committee or a policy for committee, I don't think really falls. No, under that's that. not an emergency. But yeah. I was thinking it was just special meetings had. I thought it was regular meetings are governed by the seven-day rule. Special meeting is governed by the 48-hour rule, as far as advertising. But it's yeah. I'll have to look at it. I I'll, I'll look at it. Yeah. I don't practice with the closed book. Yeah. Okay. If you if if possible, if we if we can if do, we do the special the meeting, we do it on the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. we um if we need to schedule another time, I wouldn't be able to meet until later in the day on the seventeenth. Well or eighteenth. Okay, I see what you're And I'm good all day. But we're all looking day. at the seventeenth and eighteenth. Okay. Let me, I will, let me look at it today and I'll get back before, before we close the day tomorrow. 
The 15th after agenda review is not good for me. Um, actually, our Keystone Elementary School is performing at the Women's Club that day, so I'm in charge of that program. So You're in charge of it? Well, I'm in charge of <laughs> making sure they, they have a little food for all those little children and all well, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. They'll be very hungry. <laughs> I'll tell you that. What about the 16th? It still wouldn't be enough days to advertise. Unless oh, that's right. Hours. The 17, so, uh, yeah, the I'm sorry. I was going the opposite way. Sorry. <laughs> 17th or 18th? The 18th and the end? Then we'll, we'll look at it. Okay. Like I said, I'll. What, what see time will we, we do it on the 17th? I, that's, I, that's what I was saying. I can do it like, at, like noon or 11 or whatever okay. on both the 17th and 18th. Okay. I have spelling bees, those two months that I've committed to. Okay. Good. Okay. Did he give you enough information? I think he did. More than, more than you wanted. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to save our comments until the end of our next meeting. Let's take a five-minute break. <laughs>